Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome for the uh, Tuesday morning session. Our first talk today is uh, Pierre Van Merbeke, single versus double interlacing in tiling models. Okay, thank please, you very much. Please, Pierre. Oh, I don't uh, I, I have, I think this works. Yeah, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, Thibaut Bonnet, Gennady L, Antonio Mori, and Pierre Suret for organizing this meeting, also for the invitation. Uh, critical phenomena have played an important role in statistical physics, and in particular in the area of random matrix theory and think of the fluctuations of the largest eigenvalue of large random matrices, think of the lengths of largest increasing subsequences in random permutation, think of the fluctuations at the boundary of a set of Dyson non-intersecting Brownian motions, etc. And we also know that these critical phenomena have led to new statistical distributions which have a universal character in the sense that they appear in totally different models. And think of the ce celebrated Tracy Willem distributions and, and its generalizations. In this talk, I will focus on critical phenomena in tiling models and on the nature <coughs> of the statistical fluctuations in the neighborhood of these uh, critical points. And so I will give an overview uh, on the work which has been done uh, those last few years. So this is, uh, this is joint work with uh, Mark Adler from uh, Brandeis University, uh, Sunil uh, from Durham, and Kurt Johansson from KTH in uh, Stockholm. And these are a number of papers I mean, on, on the subject. Uh, but let me immediately begin. So, I will be I will be discussing lozenge and donor tiling, the two kinds. Um, and what you see in all those models is is that you have a solid phase, that is to say, where the dominoes or uh, lozenges are structured in a brick-like way, and then you have a liquid phase which is such that the correlations are decaying polynomially with distance. And then you, have a, you can have a gas phase where the correlations are decaying exponentially with distance. Now in, the, in this talk, I will only consider uh, solid and liquid phases. Okay? Now there has been heuristics, uh, there has been quite a bit of heuristics by uh, Kenyon, Okunkov, and Scott Sheffield uh, some almost 15 years ago uh, on this, but it was really heuristic. There were very few you know, precise results, terms, and so that was totally absent. So um, let me, yes. Now for large size domains, uh, you, one has typically uh, liquid patches within solid regions, and the boundary between those um, solid, uh, be, be, between the liquid patches and, and uh, the solid phase, that's called the Arctic curve, okay? And those, those liquid patches now, they can intersect, they can touch the boundary of the domain, or they can touch each other, okay? And in fact, that's what I want to discuss. What happens uh, near, the, near the place where they touch, where they touch the boundary of the domain, etc. Uh, when, two, when two curves, when they just touch, that's called a TAC node. Uh, I, mean, I will often be talking about the, a TAC node. Now, I should mention a work which was done by uh, Kari Astala from Finland. Uh, Duse uh, is from Prowse and Chia Zong, uh, which isn't published yet, but it's a very 
beautiful analytical paper, and uh, they show that for very large polygonal domain, the asymptotic height function, I will explain to you what it is, the height function, is a solution to a variational problem. And it amounts to minimizing over surface tension functions which satisfy a Morton pair equation. And they show that the Arctic curve, which I mean the boundary between liquid and solid, is algebraic with at most a finite, finitely many singularities. And they can be cusps, tack nodes, or tangency points of the Arctic curve with the boundary of the, of the domain. Sometimes they, they call them, at, I mean, I think of Kunkov called them uh, turning points. Now, this is reassuring because that means you don't have to go much further, okay? But at least you want to understand what happens near those places, those cuffs, those tack nodes, and those tangency points. So in fact, I will discuss each of them. The, the tangency points of the, uh, with the domain, that is something which has been, that ha the, the results have been around for, for quite a while. But so let me begin, in fact, let me begin with the last point here, because uh, the tangency, so, so that, see, this is a, such a, uh, Aztec rectangle, I, I would call it, and you put tilings, dominoes, then you find, in fact, two regions, you find two regions, I will explain it in, in some detail in a moment, you find two, two regions, and uh, you see that this is tangent to, to the boundary here, it's tangent to the boundary there, and it's tangent to the boundary there, okay? And that means that you have different frozen phases, uh, we will see that, for instance, for the uh, domino tilings, there are four times four types of dominoes, and uh, you have you have the frozen phase here, which is with one kind of domino, there's a frozen phase here, which is another kind of domino, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you see here that uh, this this point separates those two uh, brick-like structures. Okay, then we have something which we call the split tack node, also the, the hard tack node. This is a place where different frozen phases on each of the two sides. Um, and an example of that is, is this. Uh, yes, an example of this is this here. Okay, so you have a, you have a, uh, uh, oh, th this you cannot see, is it visible? No, it's hardly visible. Anyway, so what you see those two, those two liquid patches, they actually, well, they, they touch, and you see that there's a there are two frozen phases here which descend into uh, the into that cusp. Okay, and when you go to the other side, it's just the other way around. Okay, and now you have. I mean, this is very difficult to see. Uh, at least for me, it's very difficult to see, uh, is that um, uh, this, in fact, it turns out that this is exactly uh, the same color, the same brick-like structure, okay? So there's no, you don't see in this case, you see two, two ellipses here, and, and they touch. And in fact, um, this, is, uh, this is supposed to be yellow, which is one kind of, uh, one, one kind of uh, domino. I don't know, in my computer, I saw, I saw it perfectly here. It doesn't seem to, to work. Okay. And then, you, uh, yes, uh, so let me, so let me first discuss a, a much older problem, which is the tangency point of the liquid patch with the boundary and what we call single interlacing. So, let me first explain what, an, what a single interlacing is. A single interlacing is simply that you put, uh, you put dots on these, on these lines here. You have, say, so, so many, you have seven dots here, you have six dots here, five, four, three, two, one, and they interlace, you, and you know what I mean. This is, this is in between those two, this is between those two, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, and so, let me denote this by, so the, the, that system of those dots on those lines, 
there are, this is x1, which has one corner, this has two corners, three corners, etc. And so this is a symbol to mean in interlacing. Now, let me put uniform measure. Let me put uniform measure on this, uh, on this cone here. And that's, that's simply, you know, Lebesgue measure, uh, which is, which uh, times the interlacing. You have to respect the interlacing, okay? Um, so, and of course we know, we know, so, th so that can be on, on, on the reals or it can be on the integer numbers. So now, um, a famous example of this is the Gaussian emission matrix, I mean, the, the GUE. I mean, GUE has the, the following uh, probability. We know that the eigenvalues form an interlacing set. So this is a, let, let, let me explain what that means. You look at the, you look at the principal minus of that problem, the, the principal minus of that problem, and you look at the, con the eigenvalues of the consecutive principal value. So you, you begin with the uh, one, uh, you know, the first one, one entry, then you have the two by two uh, principal minor, three by three principal minor, uh, uh, um, et, 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 et cetera. So now there, there is a property, which was in fact pointed out by Baryshnikov in 2001, is that it has the Gibbs property. Uh, namely, it means that if you know I mean, if you think of the, of the previous picture here, if you know, if you know the distribution of these dots at that level tau, then this is uniformly distributed. I mean, given all the constraints, okay? That's a very important fact uh, in this business because that enables you to express the probabilities, any probability in a very, in a very easy way. N namely, the, the probability that, uh, so let me say that in, in formulas here, so the, so the probability given at a level tau that is equal to x, that the, given the probability for the, for the particles which are above x tau, I mean, that, that is equal to the Lebesgue measure on x divided by the total volume, that is to say the total integral of the cone. The total integral of that cone is equal to this expression, where this is the uh, fundamental determinant, okay? So this enables you to compute any kind of probability, okay? Uh, knowing, knowing this fact, so the probability that at any level, xt is in the xt is equal to this, uh, you have the dx tau, the Lebesgue measure on the highest level times the Lebesgue measure on the cone, okay? And this is equal to this expression here, okay? Um, yes. Now, this problem also has a kernel. That is to say, a kernel which enables you then to compute the probabilities, okay? Uh, N namely, that, that kernel is um, it's the GUE minor kernel. It's uh, expressed as uh, the heavy side function here, the heavy side function here, plus a double integral, plus a double integral where this is an integral, the U integral is over a small circle about zero. And this is a complex line to the right of that small circle. Going from uh, from the bottom to the top, times this this expression. So the tau one, the, the levels uh, appear right here. The coordinates appear x one and x two here. Okay. So one one can deduce the probability distribution which I showed you before. One can deduce it in fact from this kernel by by sort of standard tricks. Okay. So in a way, in this situation, everything is known. Um, now, uh, let me look at a discrete model, okay? I, I would like to construct now a discrete model, which is such that in the limit, it leads to this uh, GUE minor kernel, okay? And the discrete model is uh, the Aztec diamond, which is such a, uh, which is such a structure here. So you will, 
you will uh, tile this Aztec diamond with uh, dominoes. And the dominoes can be, they can be horizontal, they can be vertical. And the horizontal, you can have the dark, I mean, the, the blue side on the left, or the blue side on the right. And the vertical, you can have the, the, the blue side on top or below, okay? Um, and we know that, I mean, that's a very old result, actually, uh, by uh, Elkis, Cooper, Glass, and probably a very important paper, where they show that this is equal to two to the n times m plus one over two. Okay. I mean, by for the uh, for the laws that that uh, that result was already known in 1911 or something like that. It's very very old. Anyway, so I, I like to pave this. I like to pave this this uh, Aztec diamond with those uh, dominoes. So this is an example. I just put dominoes domino like this, uh, yeah, straight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, how do you tackle that? How, how do you deal with that? Okay. Um, I'm going to put a height function on each. I'm going to put a height function on, on each of those uh, dominoes, okay? Uh, namely, this is h. This is, uh, when I say h, suppose that h is zero, then this is flat, okay, it's flat. When h is zero here, then this is one, 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 so it's tilted. Okay, and then I'm going to draw the level line of um, at level h plus a half, which is here. Okay, and then I have a domino like this with the blue on, on top. Okay, and then I have a, and here it's h, h, uh, so just think of h equal to zero, 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 there is one, one, one. So then you can draw a level line which departs at level a half which departs here and which goes there. I mean, it doesn't need to be straight. I mean, it doesn't matter, but essentially that, that, that's what it is. And the same for that, okay? Now I'm going to, um, so when I do that, I get the following picture. I get the following picture, okay? Uh, uh, you take those styles, so I have, I carry that line, etc., and then here. So then you get level lines which go from one side to, to the other. And there's also a fact, which is uh, due to the construction of those dominoes, is that this goes up. I mean, it, it goes always from zero to one, from one to two, from two to three, etc. And of course, it has to be like that, because, I mean, this has to be, you can use this tile to put here, for instance, and then you know, is it is H, H plus one. So if it, if it is three here, it is four there. And, and then say, I mean, take, you can also pave it with this. You can put such a domino here. If, it, if H is five, this has to be six. So indeed, five and six. And also you see by the same argument, this, this is flat. It's seven, 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 seven. So that means that uh, those level lines, they depart, say, here at height equal to two and a half, and they end up at height two and a half, okay? So the, those level lines is a, I mean the level those level lines is equivalent to the paving. You could forget about paving altogether. Okay. Now there's another fact is that I want to associate uh, with this level lines and uh, with this uh, tiling. I want to uh, I want to associate um, a dot process. Okay. A, dot process, that is to say, a, eventually a determ determinantal point process, okay? So how do I do that? I will intersect, I will intersect those uh, dominoes by a line which passes through the white and which will eventually intersect those level lines. And in fact, um, in the next slide, I, I do this precisely here, okay? And, uh, so I intersect, I have a line which passes here, and each time I intersect one of these level lines, I put a dot in the middle. The same here, I intersect the level line at this point, I put a dot in the middle and also here. So you see already immediately a interlacing structure appearing. This is one, 
this is, these are two, and then these are three, et cetera, and four, et cetera, okay? You say, but of course, they are, they are integers here. They are, not, they are not real. So what we want to prove, what we want to prove that is that this is a determinantal point process of interlacing dots. And in fact, this is a simulation that uh, Sunil made at, uh, at, at, at Durham. Um, the, I mean, the black dots in this case are replaced by white ones because otherwise you, you, you wouldn't see them. Uh, so here you see that, I mean, actually, the, um, compared to a previous page, the things got turned around. It, it, it doesn't matter. So uh, you have you have all those parallel lines, it, it intersects, you have, it sees a, a green one, and then you see the blue one, etc. And you see this, this is an interlacing pattern of, of dots and it goes all the way uh, like that. Yeah, let me. Now, in order to do probability, one needs to, one needs to put a weight, okay? And the weight is such that we put, uh, such that the weight is A, which is a number between zero and one, okay, uh, for vertical dominoes and horizontal do dominoes, we, we, we put uh, the weight one. You could put A and B, but then you sort of divide, it doesn't matter. So I can always uh, have the horizontal dominoes to be one and the vertical to be uh, A. And so the probability of a tiling is given by the, the following, uh, by the following formula. It's a to the power number of vertical dominoes in T in, in the configuration divided by the sum of all the possible uh, tilings. And of course, the, the goal is a study, is a study of the random point process, which we like to find the kernel of for, the, for those dots. So that's what I will sketch in in this uh, in this slide here, so the kernel is given. The kernel is given by the following formula. It's an integral over gamma naught l plus, which is a gamma naught is a circle about zero. L plus is a vertical line to the right of that circle, and it's given by the following formula. This is something sort of like. Um, a heavy side function, and then the, the the parameter a, which is which were the weights or the tiles that appears explicitly in here, and then one shows that when uh, you look at this kernel here, you you have to do some conjugation. A kernel can always be conjugated because, in fact, what really happens is that you take the fret on the turn of the kernel. So if you conjugate, it doesn't matter; it doesn't see that. So, so that means that uh, the limit, one shows that the limit of uh, this kernel properly scaled, okay? There's a scaling uh, in, well, the, 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 the size of that, um, I mean, the, the size of, of, of that uh, Aztec diamond grows, okay? It grows, and that's n, that does the size. So when the limit and n goes to infinity, it leads to this uh, GUE minor kernel, which you saw before, okay? So that, that's all uh, standard. So you see that behind the GUE minor process, there is a natural discrete point process. And now um, I want to go to the actual uh, theme of uh, my talk, uh, is that I would like to look at doubly interlacing system and first like to explain what, what that means of doubly interlacing system. It means that you have, you have a strip here. Okay, you have all those levels here and you have a strip which has, uh, which, which has width rho, I, 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 I call it rho. And above that line of uh, the boundary of that strip, it is inter singly interlacing. Here you have five dots, and here you have six dots which interlace, and you have seven dots which interlace, etc. It goes up. And the same below. Here you have five dots, and six, and seven, etc. And then in that strip, in that strip, uh, you have always the same number of dots. You always have the same number of dots. So you had, you had five here, 
you have five here, you have five here, and they interlace, okay? That's what, uh, that's what I mean by a double interlacing set of knots. Uh, so, yes, so the strip of which row, now the lines within the strip have the same number of dots is equal to R, so it's equal to five in this case. The, the width of the strip is seven in this case, and beyond the number of, beyond the number of the dots increase by one. So, as I said, I mean, you have five here, and there's six, seven, etc., and below here as well. Okay. So that means that it's, a, it's something which is, in fact, uh, single interlacing, and then it stabilizes, and then it's single interlacing on the other side again. Now, is that, is that a situation uh, that actually comes up? Okay. And is there uh, actually a kernel going, going with such a situation? That, that's what I want to explain in, in, the, in the next slide. So let me come back for, that, uh, for a second with that picture. Of course, you might say, you might say well, this is, uh, in fact, this is that strip again. And you could say, well, this is single interlacing. So it's a combination of two single interlacing that you can do, but then you still miss out a number of dots there. And that's because the row is bigger than R. Okay? When rho is equal to R, I mean, then in fact it's, uh, it's much simpler because then you can, uh, when rho is equal to R, I mean, you can, if you draw that cone of the, uh, you know, sort of catching that single interlacing set here and that single interlacing, then you have all the dots, you haven't missed any. The only, the only condition to make it doubly interlacing, the only condition to make it doubly interlacing is to say that this is smaller than that, and this is smaller than that, this is smaller than that. So there are actually exactly row conditions here as, as, many, as many levels in, uh, in, in the strip. So I will, in fact, discuss both cases. Uh, I will mostly discuss this case, but then uh, because of this special structure, things simplify. Now, I, I will write down uh, a kernel which actually lives on such a doubly interlacing system like this, okay? Um, so, and that, that I call, we call that the discrete back node kernel L on Z times R. Uh, is the kernel of a determinantal point process on a doubly interlacing set of points, okay? So let me, uh, let me look at the formula, okay? Now this is, a, this is a kernel, it's a big formula, okay? But it's not as bad as, as you might think. First of all, what, what you've seen here, I mean, you have this, this blue here, that looks exactly like the single interlacing. And that has to do with the single interlacing guys which are above the strip. And then uh, you have uh, here, you have the blue formula here that's also single interlacing, but from below, okay? But then of course, unfortunately, it's a more complicated system, so it gets multiplied with function theta r, which I will explain to you in the next slide. There, there are certain uh, multiple integrals which I will explain to you in the next slide. And then there's a term here, which in fact uh, relates to that strip, okay, to the dots on that strip. That's this term, uh, and that's always non-zero. So this, this one is non-zero when the tau one is above the strip. And this, the second one, the second one is non-zero when tau two is below the strip. This is always non-zero, it's, it's always there. I mean, unfortunately, it's always there. And then there's an extra term in a, which appears in a very special situation is when tau two is smaller than zero and tau one is bigger than rho. That's the, that's the only time that it ever, ever appears. So the, the, I might say that the relevant terms are actually the, the three first terms. So again, these are integrals over uh, a little circle. This is an integral over uh, a line to the right of, of that circle. These are two integrals, two, two residue integrals over gamma naught. And again, this, these are two integrals over a, a complex line to the right of that circle. And as you gather from the picture, 
This kernel is invariant under the involution tau one going to rho minus tau two, and y one uh, is interchanged with minus y two. It just means that that picture which I showed you before it could be just turned around. There's that, just that that symmetry. And and of course that that it's easy to check then that this this uh, part of the kernel. Um, turns into that by involution turns into that one. This is self-involutive and this is self-involutive as well. Okay. So this is the tech node curl. Now, of course, um, there's no way that anyone can see from that formula that it lives on this, uh, on this double interlacing system. There's absolutely no way. But you can see that when you look at a discrete model. Okay, and in fact, but before discussing that, I like to show to you that uh, although it looks like a, a rather horrible formula, you can actually use this kernel in order to compute probability. Because after all, when you have a kernel, you like to know what are what are the probabilities of the levels, what is the probability of the, of the points, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in fact, uh, this is done partially, although it's. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, no, I forgot to tell you those, those the function of theta, which you saw here. The, so there's theta r, uh, which depends, uh, that r depends on the number of dots in, on the levels within that strip. Then you have a theta plus r minus one, theta minus r plus one, and they are given by the following formula. I mean, it's, uh, they are multiple integrals, as many as there are dots on the lines, uh, over the um, I mean, complex lines to the right of the origin, and uh, this is the this is the van der Mande determinant square. Okay. So um, yeah, this yes, as I mentioned to you, when rho is equal to r, because remember, then if you take those two cones, it captures all the dots. So it is likely that therefore the formulas simplify a lot. And indeed, they do simplify a lot. You can write them down as the Dewey minor, okay, the Dewey minor uh, kernel that you saw before, plus sort of a perturbation. A perturbation is given by an inner product of, uh, this is in fact a, a resolvent of that kernel K beta. And these are sort of other kernels that are called A and B. And so you take the inner product, so this acts on that function here. And it's, um, the action is limited to the range minus rho up to infinity. Okay. Um, this, this kernel here, maybe if you can remember it, it will come back later. Uh, it will play a role later. So for, for rho equal to r, the, the formula simplifies uh, a lot. Now, what, what, uh, what I like to do, I want to show you the distribution at every, because that's a very natural question, what is the distribution of those dots along this, this line? Or what is the distribution of those dots along that line? Okay. So that can, a single distribution along a line can always be computed. And in fact, we compute here the joint distribution for two levels. Say you take this level to tau one, this level tau two. You like to know what the distribution, the distribution of those points along those two levels, tau one and tau two, and et cetera, et cetera. Or you take two levels inside. And it's known, I say, it's, it's known for these cases. So you take two levels outside the strip, or you take two levels inside the strip. That, that's totally known. Yeah, there are distributions that, I have ne that I've never seen, and <coughs> it's given by the, the following. Uh, it's given by the, the product of two, I would say, well, van, van der Mondel like objects, okay, a delta tilde, uh, which depend on the, uh, well, which depend on the coordinates of the level tau one, and this depends on the coordinates of the level tau two. So that means the inside don't play any role in this in this uh, formula here. It doesn't play any role whatsoever. 
uh, DZ. Uh, and then you have, you have in fact, the, again, the Lebesgue measure for what's inside, okay? And, and so that means that is again that the Gibbs property, if I give, if I give this, the situation at a level tau one and a level tau two, I know exactly what happens inside, it's uniform distributed, okay? That's what this uh, result shows. Um, now I, I have to explain to you what is the, uh, what is in fact that delta tilde. Delta tilde is the following Determine, as I said, it, it sort of tries to be a van der Monde, but it, it isn't in the sense that this I runs over a number of points. And, but the phi, the, the, so the, this, this, these are just powers, they can appear only if uh, tau minus O is strictly positive. When tau minus O is negative, they won't appear. Then this, this will play any role. Those phi, they are, they are the following integrals. So um, the phi, that's the following kind of integral, which when k is positive, it is the following integral. It's a Gaussian integral, you might say, from zero to infinity moment. And this is uh, the Hamid polynomials, okay? So, uh, yes. Now, the case, as I mentioned to you before, the case rule equal to r is, uh, in fact, uh, easier, is that there you can, compute any, any kind of probability. You can take uh, a level outside the strip and one inside and compute the probability. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And uh, <clears throat> so then in that case, uh, one, the formula which I showed you before is always valid for every level. But what's remarkable in this case is, of course, that it's actually, you can, you can, uh, manipulate those those things and it becomes in fact something which is much more appetizing namely it's uh, the Dewey minor row that you saw before for the single interlacing for the uh, for the tau one level the uh, minor uh, kernel for the uh, tau two level, divided by those inequalities. Because in, remember, when you look at the, at the picture here, you see that what's really, these are precisely two single interlacing, and the only thing that, you, that uh, make them a double interlacing system is those inequalities here. And, and indeed, in fact, you then, you then show that, so it is a conditional probability of two single interlacing systems given by those inequalities. And those inequalities are exactly rho such, in, uh, such inequalities. And that turns out to be the determinant of this kernel, which I should show you before. I said to, uh, I said to you, well, try to remember what K beta is, but that it, it appears right here. Now, the, the question is, it still is a problem, which I, I have not explained to you, how, does one get that formula, okay? And the formula comes from two tiny models, which, which lead to double interlacing. And there are domino tilings of Aztec rectangles and Lozenge tilings of non-convex polygons. So let me go to that. What is an Aztec rectangle is the following. I mean, this is a regular Aztec diamond, okay? And now I, I make a rectangle like this. But what I do, if you look at this Aztec diamond, it has blue, white, so left blue, and there white on the right. This, this is left, white, and right, blue. And the same here, it's opposite. No, I, I make it the same. That is to say the left blue is on that side, and left blue is on that side, okay? And then the left blue is on top here, and the left blue is on top here, which is different from that situation. That forces you, that forces you to have an indentation here, because otherwise you cannot make it to, to the end, which I call a cut, okay? So uh, there's a number of parameters, uh, geometrical parameters, namely you have M, which is uh, from the top to the place where the cut appears, and an M is uh, the, 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 I mean, the second half, you might say, and you put the cut, um, 
well, symmetric with regard to each other. That's just, uh, you don't need to, but it, that's just, uh, this makes it only more complicated. So in, in this case, in this case, the n is equal to eight. So you count one, two, three, up to eight here. And the, n, the, the sorry, sorry, the n is eight here. The m, you count 10. And then the capital M is three here, uh, et cetera. And the delta, the delta is equal to n minus m, which in this case is, is uh, minus two. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, so in this situation now, let me just uh, indicate to you that you have, uh, you know, remember how do I see this double interlacing of those dots? How do I see that? Namely, you form you form this you form the strip here which go into that uh, cut, that indentation here, then you form the strip there, okay? So that is going to be a strip, which in this case, uh, that's a strip in question here. The row is equal to eight in this case. Then there's, there's something called the sigma, which is an amount of overlap. It's uh, suppose that you would take this, you would complete the square, and then you, on that side you will complete the square, then this is, and you would ignore those cuts. I mean, it would tell you how much the two overlap. Uh, and then you have, but then you also have another number, R, which in fact will be, you will see in the next slide, the R will be the number of dots on the uh, lines which are within the strip, okay? That's, that's this R. Um, <clears throat> so I think, and then again, it's the same kind of uh, idea that uh, I said before in the case of the singular and the Dewey minor problem. I mean, you, you look at, um, you have four types of dominoes here. You, you, you put the height function here, height function, et cetera. And then you have the level lines, which are h plus a half here, h plus a half, this is flat, and h plus a half there. And then you, we will see, we'll intersect this with, uh, with lines which all go uh, in that direction. Um, <clears throat> that's done in this picture here. So you have, you have, again, you have that strip, you have those level lines. Here again, you have that, uh, that's at the boundaries completely specified. There's nothing, there's nothing uh, random about it. It's completely specified on that side, etc. cetera. Um, and here you have your, you have your, uh, your level lines. And now I will intersect those level lines with lines, oblique lines, which go to the black squares, and which actually go to the blue squares. And I, I drew, I was a little impatient, but I drew a few cases here. So you take for this intersects the level line here, level line there, level line here. So in fact, there are dots which whose whose level always goes up by one each time. Each time you intersect a level line, you jump up by one, etc. <coughs> uh, okay. So this, in fact, is, and you show, you show, it's not, it's not terribly hard. I mean, you show that this leads exactly to, uh, to a um, double interlacing system of dots, okay? Uh, I, from, I drew another example here. You could continue. So inside, you would see that it always intersects according to the same number of dots here, and outside it goes up by one each time. And the kernel going, it, this is one shows is the determinant of point process with a kernel, which is given by a certain formula. I don't want, uh, I don't want you to go in, into the details. I mean, this is, to, to get that kernel is quite an involved story because uh, of the fact that those paths start at different places. You see, they start here and then they start there. So there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's a lot of analysis going into that, uh, that kernel. Okay, uh, there's, you might say, well, are, are these um, aztec rectangles, are they always tileable? In fact, the answer, no, they're not always tileable. They're tileable only if certain inequalities of those M, little M, capital M, and N are satisfied. Okay. You, can, you can take one of these, uh, uh, 
as, uh, as take rectangles, you can, you can start tiny them and it doesn't, it doesn't work. Okay. You, you, cannot, you, you can start doing it on one side, but it will fail. But this works in those uh, situations. And then, in fact, you show, you get that, uh, you get that um, kernel for these red dots. You have to do some rescaling, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you center it about the middle of the right-hand boundary of the strip. Okay, you, you take one, one boundary, you look at the middle, and then you, you scale according to n, n, the size that, of that thing is going to infinity. So you, uh, when n goes to infinity, you actually show that that limit with some, again, with some conjugation, that limit in fact goes to the discrete tactile kernel. Yeah. So that means that uh, that discrete tactile kernel came from a geometrical situation and taken an appropriate limit. Now there's, um, I want to show you some, uh, Sunil made, made me all kind of beautiful simulations. I mean, that's what you get. Okay, you take uh, M, N equal to 100. So this is 100 tiles here. Um, you have M is equal to 150 here. You have uh, capital M is equal to 90. And then you show that the width of the strip is 61. The number of dots within that strip is 11. So what does that mean? That means that if you intersect this, if you intersect here, you will see, uh, in, uh, if you intersect it with a, a line, which is going to, you will see exactly 11 points. And in fact, what you see, there are 11 filaments. I call them filaments, there are 11 filaments. 11 filaments in a sea of uh, brick-like uh, structure blue here. Yeah, of course, the brick like stuff is green, red, and blue here, and yellow, etc. Okay. Another, if you change those numbers, if you change those numbers, you can have the, the following situation where the brick like structure is, has a different color here, but also you see, in fact, there are four filaments here because the number of dots on the lines which are within the strip is four. And by the way, I mean, these are. Uh, these are very probably non-intersecting Brownian motions in, in, uh, in, in the limit that hasn't been shown yet, but that's uh, an interesting question. Uh, and then you have uh, a, a situation where you have a very large number of, uh, uh, when n is 190, when it gets much bigger, and then you get, in fact, the, the following situation where you see that you have um, tiles a brick light structure of tiles of, of uh, color blue and yellow here, which goes down into the cusp. And there you have also an in interesting uh, limit, in interesting statistic, which is called the cusp area parcel. Let me go, not go into that now. You have the same kind of situation with uh, the lozenges. So you have four, uh, sorry, three here, yeah, three kind of lozenges. You put height function of these um, three kind of lozenges, uh, and you intersect them with uh, you intersect them with, with dots. I'm, I'm sorry, you intersect it with, with certain lines. No, I, I mean to say that you have level lines again here. This is a level line of of uh, level one half. This is a level line of, of level one half. This is flat, uh, and uh, I, I will show you the kind of the kind of um, uh, a polygon, which we look at. I mean, this is a hexagon. Uh, it's a hexagon, and you put two cuts here. Okay, you put two cuts, and then you try to tile this. Okay, you try, you try, you try to tile this. I mean, what you do, you have to make an affine transformation, you know, to to really do mathematics on it. You have to make some affine transformation to actually get to to this situation, and you are interested in those blue tiles. You are interested in those blue tiles. And in fact, I will, I will just skip all the details. I mean, you have that strip again that you saw before, I mean, of the double interlacing. Here you have one dot and one dot, one dot there, and then outside it grows to two dots, three dots, et cetera, et cetera. So you, you compute the point process going with those blue dots, and you take the limit, uh, you take an appropriate limit, I means somewhere in the middle here, uh, along the boundary of that strip, 
then again you find in fact the uh, fractal kernel in slightly different corners, but it doesn't matter. You, you find the same uh, fractal kernel. Now, there's actually one, yeah, I mean, this is such a simulation. I must say before we, we did that sort of thing and we had done some simulation of that, uh, most of us were very surprised and we didn't know why you had that, why you had those filaments which were connecting what you see here, you sort of have two arctic ellipses here and they are connected with those filaments, but now we understand exactly what's going on, it's, to it's totally natural. So, um, I now like to discuss this soft attack note in the last few minutes. Um, <clears throat> it's too bad that you can't see the simulation, but anyway, so I, I will try to explain you what, what you do here. So you begin, I'm again going to look at one of these Aztec rectangles and I will, and I look at a case where uh, rho is equal to r. Okay. That means to say where the double interlacing gets basically the product of two single interlacings. Uh, <clears throat> and now, uh, and another way of saying that is that you take this Aztec rectangle, rectangle and you take two Aztec diamonds, which you overlap. And I think I, I, think I show you that in, in that picture here. Forget about the ellipse now. So you have one, one Aztec diamond here, another one here, and that leads to you overlap them. But I want them to overlap in a very specific way, and that's what I like to explain in that previous slide. <clears throat> so you draw the Arctic ellipse in each of those Aztec diamonds, and, and that's well known. I mean, the ellipse, the Arctic ellipse, that is to say, the ellipse which separates the brick-like structure with the liquid structure that will be given by, uh, in appropriate corners, will be given by this, where Q is A divided by A plus A minus one, and P is one minus Q, and the R is this. Where, remember, A is the weight on horizontal, whereas one was the weight of the vertical, or maybe it was the other way around, I forgot. And now, uh, <clears throat> in the next slide, that's what I explained here, you overlap, you overlap those two, uh, you overlap those two Aztec diamonds in such a way that those two ellipses touch. That's a very, very specific situation. And then I say, well, there's a, then I like to explain that there's a new universality class appearing about here which is very different from the previous one, ent entirely different. Uh, <clears throat> so again, uh, you, you tile those things with, uh, with those dominoes, again, the same, same story with height function, et cetera, et cetera, and you, you intersect with oblique line, you put dots. So it's, um, but then in fact, uh, so now I, I uh, yeah, I mean, th this is the, th this is such a picture. So this is the overlap of two Aztec diamonds here. Uh, I think of one, two, three, four, yeah, eight. I mean, th I mean this is eight. And uh, you look at the, uh, um, you, you, you look at the point process, which is generated by parallel lines, which run in this direction before they run in that direction. Now they run in this direction, okay? So each time, each time it, it intersects one of those uh, level lines, I put a dot in the middle of the square here, 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 etc., and then here, uh, etc. So that's a new uh, point process. It's a new point process, which I will call uh, K dots of two Z one. I mean, it's in terms of these corners. It's just, it's here, here, this only appears on the blue ones. So that's why I take two Z one. Uh, I only take uh, even numbers. And X one, X two is the position of those dots along <coughs> those lines. So that that is actually again an interlacing set, but slightly different. 
and then in fact you take the limit so uh, you do you know you, you write down what the kernel is for that discrete case for that uh, tiling problem i don't want to write down i uh, i don't want to write down what it what it is let me see uh, Oh yeah, yeah, no, that's right. So um, I scale the z according to tau n minus one third and x uh, c n minus two thirds. That gives you new time variables. So the z gets replaced by tau and the x gets replaced by c. Then I look at the this two uh, this I, I call the two aspects because you overlap those two as, uh, as, aspects. So it is uh, the limit of that is in fact equal to what I call the tactical kernel, not the discrete tactical kernel, but a tactical kernel. And the tactical kernel is given by uh, <coughs> the following formula. It's the airy process, the extended kernel for the airy process, which I will give you in the next slide, uh, plus again some perturbation. I've seen that before. You have, this is the airy kernel, the usual area kernel, this is a, a resultant which is limited to that, that range up to infinity. Uh, this, this is a function A depending on, on the corner, depending on tau, and you integrate this from two to two to sigma up to infinity. Okay, there has been quite a bit of work around this in many different contexts. For instance, that also appears when you look at uh, two sets of uh, non-intersecting Dyson Brownian motion, which momentarily meet and then go go apart again. I mean, it meets. So that has been it, that kernel also has been seen in uh, random walks, set of random walks which meet meet and then go off again. So th there's a whole literature on that. Uh, and also after, uh, uh, after even more recently, there, there are things which have been done by, by Ferrari and Lichty and Wang, et cetera, et cetera. And in fact, the, the area process kernel, the extended, uh, the extended uh, area process kernel is given by now, a formula which we know from, uh, from Herbert Spohn's paper in 2002 in the journal of statistical physics. So it's this kind of object here. This is the Eric function. And then you have, well, the Eric kernel, we know very well what that is, that is this. Then we have th that function. Uh, I should go back for one second. You have function A here. The function A, and uh, that function A is, is the following. It's, it's the following, oh, it's the following uh, where this ai tau of that variable is is uh, something which looks like it's an area function times some times some uh, ex 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 exponentially yeah the next slide is that that picture oh yeah this is really clear so now this is a very different situation it's a very different situation uh, remember it was produced by two aztec diamonds which were uh, which were uh, which were overlapping in such a way that two ellipses just merely touch, and what you see here, and that's why I call it a, a soft tag node, because the uh, the brick-like structure is the same on both sides. Okay, before you saw the you saw uh, one type of brick-like structure, another type which was descending, in fact, in the place where they touch. And that produced those, those filaments, et cetera, et cetera. This is actually a very different uh, situation. So, I mean, basically this, this describes, uh, this describes, I mean, probably all that can happen in these, uh, in these tying problems. And we like to think that, uh, this discrete technical kernel is some sort of master kernel also in the sense that many, many other kernels that have been considered in the context of these, uh, um, these, uh, uh, and, and these problems that many of these kernels can be obtained as appropriate limits, but that, that we don't know yet. I mean, okay, but uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for very nice talk. So we have time for maybe one or two quick questions. 
I, I should maybe add, of course, that this one uh, interesting uh, problem which <coughs> arises from this is that you, you have all those distributions, you have all those kernels, it's trying to find differential equations for them. Because if you, if you can write on differential equations, you can do all kind of large time asymptotics, etc. in a very easy way. I mean, that's, uh, that's certainly uh, a completely open problem in this. Yes. Well, maybe it's a very basic question. Uh, are there some physical systems where um, these these questions can applied uh, uh, can can be applied? Well, I mean, it's uh, well. That's like asking: Are uh, Aztec diamonds are they do they have physical implications? That's sort of the same. The same question that I, I, I don't really know. I, I, uh, I would think so, but I, I don't, I can, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, in fact, uh, Herbert certainly knows that, yes. You know, there's a very famous experiment where you start in a metastable state, and then you will sort of, at the single point, you create the stable phase, and then this stable phase is growing into the unstable phase, and that's described by such kind of models. Well, there, there's some papers where people have done all kinds of simulation, well, not simulation, but real, I mean, real experiments. I mean, looking at the microscope, at boundaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, 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 yeah. <coughs> I, I forgot the names, but I think it's some some Jap some Japanese, yeah, some Japanese Takeuchi, that's right, yeah, where they see that sort of thing. Yeah. If I may ask a question, so on this diagram that you show, there are region of uh, solid state, there yes. are rigid, uh, regions of liquid, liquid state, state yeah. but I didn't see the the, the gaseous state. No, no, but that, no, but that's a very good question. In fact, that has there has been quite a bit of work on this on the gas, on the situation where you have the three phases, and also people have looked at uh, so you have where you have a solid phase, you have a gas phase, yeah, no, so, sorry, a solid phase, a liquid phase, and a gas phase. And people certainly have looked at what happens at the boundary between uh, the gas and the liquid phase. And th that's actually more complicated, but that doesn't fall into this category. I mean, that's a different story. I mean, the way you, the way you produce those uh, gas phases is by uh, having, well, you, if you look at the corresponding diamond model, you have, to, you have to build in some periodicity. And then, in fact, you get, uh, you get also, um, uh, the gas phase, but as I say, that's a different story. I mean, in fact, that's that's the next, that's the next problem to really understand uh, uh, what the statistics near, uh, what happens along the, uh, at the boundary between gas and liquid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the people also see singularities appearing. Uh, they are very beautiful. Um, I mean, simulation which have been done along those lines. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. So we have now coffee break yeah. and the uh, photo. Uh, yeah. I don't know in which order. Yeah. Uh, just, just small announcement. Uh, unfortunately, as you know, uh, Antonio Moro, he got COVID 